Well, I'm joined now by girls basketball captains Kate Earl and Ali Giambanco. Sorry, can't pronounce it. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. So you guys come in at 19 and one, um, the number one seed in Division Two South, already locked up. Um, so we have so many stats and things to dive into, but before we do, just kind of, how's it feel? I mean, this must be awesome. It feels good. Like it's really exciting and kind of surprising. <laughs> Now, do you guys know, has there been any history lesson or anything? Do you know, has Nord ever been the number one seed for, for girls basketball? No. I don't know either. I'm I just didn't sure know if Coach yeah. Quinn had said no. something. No, I mean, sure. if, if they have, it's probably been a, been a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, that's awesome. So you guys coming into this year, you didn't graduate a single player. Mm -mm. Um, so this year you have pretty much the exact same roster, except you gained a freshman and anyone else? Or is that it? No. That's it. All right. So for preseason for you guys, typically it's, kind of learning what your teammates like to do, learning a new offense, getting used to the coach. You guys didn't really have any of that. So was your preseason a little bit different than a typical season? Um, yeah, a little bit. We, we still like went over plays and everything like that to like refresh your memories and everything. But like we had a big focus on like coming together and like playing good defense. Defense has been like a strong point in our game mm -hmm. this year. So what were Coach Quinn's expectations for you guys, again, not only as captains, but for the team as a whole? Um, she just wanted us to like focus on coming together, and we just, our motto is never satisfied. So we want to, like, after like we win, we just like want to keep going from that and keep moving forward. Now, Coach, unfortunately, couldn't be here tonight. We do have an interview coming up with her after this. Um, but talk to us a little bit about what it's been like to have her as your coach. Um, it's been really exciting. Like, she's a very strong role model for us, and she always motivates us to like work our hardest and always put in 110% because that's just how we're going to get better and mm -hmm. be the team that we want to be. Now, what's her coaching style? She she yelling at you guys, or it seems like you guys have a pretty good vibe going on yeah. in that girls' locker room. Yeah, when she when she needs to, <laughs> she's on us. She knows when and when not to. Yeah. Um, so you guys talked a little bit about defense. So this is not an estimate or a typo. You guys are giving up 25 points per game, which is sort of like middle school numbers, <laughs> truly. Um, you've held your opponents under 30 points in 15 of the 20 games. How much work do you guys put in in practice focusing on defense and, and what kind of pride do you take in playing good defense? Um, we focus on defense a lot. Like we have our coaches play offense for us, so it's really difficult in practice. So it's kind of easy for us in the games. And I think that just really helps us with our defense. So we're used to like getting pushed. I mean, you must also feel like, too, you guys have a pretty talented team going up against each other in yeah. practice every day. Never mind just the coaches. Yeah. That's got to help you out a little bit, too, don't you think? Yes. Um, so your only loss this season came in the second game of the year. So since then, it's been a casual 18 wins in a row um, in a league that's sending eight of its 12 girls teams to the tournament. So, it, I mean, it's not like you guys have walked over yeah. bad teams. It's a pretty good league. Have you guys talked about kind of how significant this is as a group or are you not even focusing on that it's just full steam ahead um we've like noticed that like okay we're actually pretty good but we're very focused on one game at a time like every opponent we all know like everyone's coming for us we all know that they have the ability to beat us so we need to like focus on just beating them and I think that kind of shows towards the end of the season you guys had a lot of big wins but arguably the most important came in the last conference game of the season against Medway. Um, they were undefeated in the conference until they ran into you guys. So talk about that game and the challenge that they posed and kind of how it felt then to clinch that TVL title. Um, it was really exciting and our coach just kept saying that we couldn't play to lose. We just had to keep playing our game and at first like we were a little bit nervous but I think we like overcame that and it was a great win. Now, because most teams would look, or most people would look and see 19 and one, they must have locked up the, the Tri-Valley a while ago, but it truly was that game that mattered, right? Because Medfield was right on your, yeah. right mm -hmm. on your tail. So if we had lost the game against Medway, we would have been co-champions of the TVL. Yeah. But because we beat Medway, we were able to just have it ourselves. That's awesome. Now, you guys then played a regular season tournament to end the season, which surprise, surprise, you won. Um, 
talk to us a little bit about the competition at that tournament because I know you played Braintree in the finals mm -hmm. and then was it Concord Carlisle before yeah. that? Mm -hmm. So what was the competition like at that tournament? Um, it was like, it was more difficult and it was more of a turning like game because there's three refs. So we were just like, it was kind of preparing us more for tournament and like giving us like the vibe for tournament. So right. we're ready for it. That's awesome. So now you guys wait to see who you're going to play in the D2 South Tournament. Um, one of the deepest divisions in the state always is for both boys and girls. Um, how are you guys preparing for that? Because you've had a little bit of downtime now after that tournament and you're waiting to see who you're going to play. Um, well, we have a scrimmage tomorrow against Bishop Fian, which will be good because they're a very good team. I believe they're in Division One, so it's a good mm -hmm. test for us. And then we just focus one game at a time, so when we find out who our opponent is, we'll like watch some game film, like scout them out, like figure out what we need to do to beat them and get to the next round. Now, you guys have had a lot of practice and a lot of games over the past week. I think I saw you had sort of an unconventional practice a couple days oh, ago, geez. was it? What was going on with that one? Um, well, Coach just likes to have one game, uh, one practice, I mean, before like tournament picks up to like fool around, just have some like team fun, like bond together. And, just have some fun before we get into tournament and everything. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, so do you guys sort of feel like you're the hunted team right now as, as the number one seed? Like, have you been getting team's best efforts? Um, yeah, we know everyone's gunning for us. So we just like have to come out ready every single game and know that like everyone wants to beat us. Now, returning everybody from last year, do you feel like that experience from playing in the tournament last season is going to help big time? Because for a lot of you, I'm sure that was the first time yeah. playing in the tournament. I think it's going to help a lot. I think that last year when we lost in tournament, it, we were like more focused on like the atmosphere of where we were playing. And yep. now I think we're, we're more prepared for that and we felt that before. So like we can pretty much play anywhere now. That's awesome. Have you guys heard yet for who your All-Stars are for this season? Do you no. know yet? We'll right. find out tomorrow. Okay, because I knew the boys had been announced. So we can't break that news. <laughs> but um, we will find out who you guys are playing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to that. And best of luck in the tournament, much like mm -hmm. every team we've talked to tonight. Hopefully you'll bring back some hardware yes. for us. Um, so as I mentioned, we were able to sit down with Coach Quinn, Brian Dunn uh, from NCM, caught up with her. So let's take a look to see what she had to say. Thanks, guys. I am now joined in studio once again by head coach of the girls' basketball team, Amy Lepley, or could I say Amy Quinn yeah. now? Yep. Yeah. Um, so we're now toward the end of the season. There's one game left at the date of this recording. So if you were to give a report card, how would you assess your team going into uh, the playoffs here? Um, I think we're doing well. Um, there's definitely things that we need to work on, and tomorrow we have Medway, and then we have a couple, two couple um, really tough opponents this weekend, which is going to kind of show us where we are seeding, but I think the girls are really coming together, and throughout the season we've built on some really good wins. Um, last night we had a really tough game against Hopkinton, but I think every other team has gotten better as the season has gone on, so they're giving us tougher challenges, which is good. I think it's no secret that you guys have done well this year um, one loss on the on the schedule um, how does that I know we talked last year about how there were no seniors that left mm -hmm. last year so how does that sort of play into um, the team chemistry that was built from last year going into this year yeah I think the girls um, definitely I mean they're so fun to be around and they they really like being around each other which is really nice I think they tasted some success last year so they were hungry when they came back um, this year to get better and to build off of that success um, we've had great le senior leadership and Emma and Allie Allie's been doing a great job on the court um, especially defensively and I mean we pride ourselves on defense we have been holding teams to 40 points our last most games which has basically kept us in a lot of games you talk about the taste of winning and I know last year you guys went on a little bit of a run and it obviously ended at Pembroke so is there any learning lessons that you kind of take going into this uh, tournament picture this time around? I think that I mean, not one girl on last year's team had been a part of a tournament atmosphere. And I think we were lucky in the sense that we got a home game, which was um, awesome. But then we went on the road with a coin flip to Pembroke, which their fans brought it. And I think my girls were a little bit shell-shocked. Um, and I think that was a big motivating factor for them this year, that if we can get two home games, that we want those two home games or the potential for the two home games. So to get a high enough seating, um, because home games are huge in the tournament. So you guys are really looking at one of the one of the higher seats in the tournament picture right now. How do you, from a coaching standpoint, how do you, 
is there any sort of, I don't want to say like arrogance, but is there some sort of idea with the team where they know where they're at, but kind of coax them to a point where they still have that next game mentality? Yeah, I mean, we're one game at a time. Unfortunately, right now with these three games left, we could go anywhere from a one to a 10 um, first round, depending on where we kind of shake out. Um, but we're one game at a time, like I said, and um, we don't try to look too far ahead. I mean, winning the TVL championship was one of our huge goals for the season. Um, but like I said, we really, really want that first home game at least. Um, and if we can get those two home, the potential for the two home games, that would be really big. And in terms of level of play for the tournament, what's the biggest difference between teams you meet in the regular season, whether you meet them in the tournament, in the regular season, twice, what's the biggest difference in terms of play? I think the intensity is huge. I think the atmosphere is much more intense. Um, every team's fighting for their life, and it's a win-or-go-home win or mentality. Um, they are totally focused on you and only you for those two, two three days of prep. Um, so they know the ins and outs of your teams, and you really need to be able to kind of counter anything they're going to give you. But just that intensity in the, the gym, you can feel it. It's one of my favorite feelings. And is there any sort of coaching philosophies or practices that you take with the tournament knowing that you don't know until that next week and you only have two or three days of repair? I think that just preparing them throughout the season. I mean, in practice right now, we throw so much different stuff at them because we've seen it all season, but so that when we do get to the tournament, we're not super shell-shocked when um, a team throws a different zone at us or they throw a junk defense at us or they try to take away a player that we um, go to a lot. So I think just throwing that at them during the regular season in practice is huge. Um, and I also think, like I said, just the one game at a time, one practice at a time, and just get better each day. And we're not future tellers, obviously, but from a fan standpoint, what do you think fans can expect for the tournament? I hope. I mean, I hope we're going to make a run. Um, I, I think we're ready to make a run, but every team is kind of going for us, um, and we need to finish out this season really strong. But I've always told the girls they're really fun to watch because they share the ball. You can tell that they love the game um, and to just keep playing their game and be fun to watch. Absolutely. Well, we'll keep an eye on you on tournament. Good luck.